Welcome to The Real News Network. I'm Jessica Devereaux in Baltimore. On Sunday, tens of thousands of Egyptians hit the streets calling for the resignation of President Morrissey. On Friday, we spoke with former Egypt Independent editor and co-founder of Mother Mus, Lena Atullah, to help us unpack these unfolding events. So, Lena, we're hearing from opposition groups that they're expecting millions of protesters out in the streets on Sunday. Do you think they'll have those kind of numbers? Well, in the past few weeks, we've seen, we've seen uh, mobilization for the uh, June 30th protest taking up different forms, uh, with calls to protest uh, being uh, made by political parties, social movements, uh, uh, civil society groups, um, individual activists, uh, and this basically promises of a big show up uh, on the 30th of June. Um, I can't really speculate the exact numbers, but I'm expecting a big uh, a big show because um, also a lot of people are just uh, mobilized to take to the street to express their disenchantment with the rule of the Muslim Brotherhood and President Mohamed Morsi. I just want to get a sense from you. Who is the opposition? What are their motives? And, and who are the forces here at play? It's hard to classify who is who. And, you know, we risk being reductionist in an attempt to classify who is uh, the, who is in the opposition. It's quite a diverse group of people. But there is clearly um, a group uh, that belongs to the former regime uh, and that wishes uh, to, to, to see a return of the former regime or at least a military takeover, uh, believing that uh, only uh, the military has the power of overthrowing uh, the rule of uh, the president. Um, then you have um, another group of uh, opposition manifested in uh Groups like the Sick of April Youth Movement, uh, the Smile Campaign, uh, and other groups, which are basically uh, also against President Morsi, but don't necessarily want to see a return of the former regime. Um, and, you know, they talk about, uh, um, you know, uh, maybe early elections, uh, the, you know, handing over of power to the uh, head of the Supreme Constitutional Court as a measure against a military takeover, um, and so on. And then a third, more radical revolutionary group is basically quite cynical to the whole setup. Um, and even though there is a strong uh, um, opposition to the rule of the Brotherhood and President Mohamed Morsi, there is a fear that uh, his uh, forced ouster is going to set uh, dangerous precedents in, in terms of democracy in Egypt. So, um, so this group is a little bit skeptical uh, towards the other groups and their demands, even though they still are against President Mohamed Morsi and they want to eventually see him go, but they don't want to set uh, um, some dangerous or precarious precedents uh, on the road for democracy. Um, in Egypt. So, uh, but the main polarization was in the opposition is basically the stand towards the military. So there is a group uh, who wants to clearly have a military takeover in order to end the rule of the brotherhood. And these are mostly groups that are pro-old regime. And then you have uh, the progressive revolutionary groups uh, who do not see any solution in a military takeover, but uh, basically a step back for the revolution. So we already saw on Friday that the supporters of the president have already turned out in several thousands uh, east of Cairo. And I wanted to get a sense from you if, if the protests that are planned for Sunday are not at the levels that the opposition groups are saying, what does that mean for the opposition? Of course, it's going to, it's going to be uh, a major, uh, a major um, weakening uh, weakening uh, thing to the to the opposition because the opposition has been very successful so far at mobilizing people particularly through the signatures campaign uh, that through which they claim that they managed to gather uh, what has exceeded 15 million uh, signatures on petitions calling for the resignation of president Mohamed Morsi and this number basically exceeds the number of votes that uh, Moisey had actually uh, garnered uh, in the presidential elections just a year from now. Um, so if this uh, move is not complemented by a big show on the streets of Cairo and outside of Cairo, but particularly in Cairo on the 30th of June, um, I think it can be um, a, a, like a green card for the regime to uh, not only say that the opposition is basically uh, weak and to, and to like completely 
disregard um, any form of pressure they try to exert, but it can also lead to um, some forms of retaliation by the regime against this opposition, which is the more scary uh, thing, really. So ahead of these protests, there are, in fact, rumors spreading that pro-Mubarak factions are going to try to incite violence on the streets and then cause massive chaos, which will then allow the army to come in and potentially a military coup to happen. What What is your take on what's brewing? It's very hard also to speculate what's going to happen in terms of uh, institutional and higher politics. Uh, we do not have a clear sense of what is the position of the army vis-a-vis um, the current stalemate between the opposition and the Brotherhood. Uh, but our sense is that uh, also there isn't a finalized position of what its position um, or what its role should be um, uh, on that day in terms of uh, to which party they should be siding. I think uh, the military has typically uh, uh, been basically waiting to see the outcome of the big day of protest to basically formulate a position. And this is reminiscent of what happened in the 2011 a revolution whereby they did not just decide to side with the people from the beginning. Um, they actually had to wait to see the scope of the protests and the extent to which it was generally threatening to the rule of former President Hosni Mubarak. And this is when they decided to step in and ask him to basically step out. So we are expecting something similar. And this is also an expression of maybe the army not being um, interested in uh, taking over in a straightforward manner, particularly after uh, a, what was a bitter experience of trying to run the country in the um, in the year and a half uh, period uh, following the ouster of President Mubarak. Uh, and it was a year where they faced a lot of challenges and a lot of opposition and a lot of criticism from the people. And it weakened basically the pro as, as the uh, symbol of the Egyptian state. So we don't have a reason to just believe that they want to step in and side with the people and overthrow uh, uh, the Muslim Brotherhood. But also, we don't have a sense of them completely siding with them. I think they'll be in a position where they'll wait and see what happens on the 30th. So it sounds like you, you believe that the army will just sort of sit on the sidelines until they get more information and see where the public favor is swaying. But do you have a sense that they will support Morrissey at all? Because they've had a tumultuous relationship in the past with Morrissey dismissing Defense Minister Tontawi and things of that nature. Do you think they want Morrissey to stay in power? As far as uh, the leadership is concerned, it's hard to believe that uh, they have a strong uh, position against the Brotherhood. The new leadership has actually been chosen and handpicked by uh, mostly, so there is reason to believe that there is a level of allegiance uh, from at least this leadership uh, towards Mosi and in general the army in Egypt is known to be quite a homogenous uh, body. So it's also hard to believe that there is um, there is a different line when it comes to uh, the rank and file or um, the second tiers or um, you know the rest of the generals. Uh, but like I said before, I do not think uh, there is clarity around what uh, their position should be and what party to side with. Uh, I think the army has a vested interest in stability. And if Moisi is standing in the face of stability and is, if his rule is just going to be causing uh, a lot more instability, this is enough reason for them to decide to stand against him, in my opinion. So Egyptian President Mohamed Morsi actually gave a speech on Thursday admitting to some wrongdoing and as well as discussing with the Egyptian people some of the changes he would like to make. Here is a quote from the speech. He said, I have discovered after a year in charge that for the revolution to achieve its goals, it needs radical measures. Lena, what is your sense of what that means, radical measures? Um, I don't know really what it means. I do not think uh, that President Mohamed Morsi has been good at producing meaning, to be honest with you. Uh, it could have a measure of threat against the opposition, and uh, his speech was not short uh, of uh, sending messages of uh, threat to different uh, uh, players of contentious politics, from the media to figures of the old regime to revolutionary groups and so on and so forth. Um, so, you know, we could basically, um, we could basically interpret uh, that statement as... Uh, um, a threat uh, to anyone who basically stands against the president. Uh, but also, like I said before, it's very hard to extract meaning uh, from that speech or, in general, anything that the president says, to be honest with you.
Okay. He did mention that he wanted to get youth more involved and, and help them in their economic situation. In Egypt, since he's taken power, could you categorize there's been a shift or an improvement in the lives of working class Egyptians? I don't think so. I mean, uh, the main record of the route so far has been an extremely deteriorating economy marked by uh, a rising fiscal crisis that has not translated into any um, improvement or welfare uh, or even, you know, preservation of status quo for the working class in the country. So, um, but also coupled to that uh, is, uh, or add to that, uh, the fact that they have uh, no vision whatsoever for how to um, to have an economic roadmap uh, to, you know, uh, have a step out of this um, out of this crisis that we're in. So, um, no improvement is the short answer, basically. Well, Lena, we'll certainly keep tracking this story, and we look forward to having you back on. Thanks for being with us. You're welcome. Thank you. And thank you for joining us on The Real News Network.